My name is Raj Shroff. I'm originally from India, but I grew up here in Hong Kong. Um, pretty much lived and worked in Hong Kong my whole life. In terms of background, I come from the insurance industry here. So I was with a insurance multinational called AXA uh, here in Hong Kong, really working across IT projects and finance functions. Um, so I spent a number of years there and I thought, okay, this is great, but what comes next? So I decided to go to business school because in my mind, I had it, I had the idea that maybe I can go into investment management and pure finance. Um, so I decided to choose Hong Kong University simply because I'd, I'd heard very good things about it. Uh, I'd also heard that in addition to a finance specialization, they were really covering the intersection of technology and business. And I felt that's where I wanted to be. The intersection between tech and business, um, for me, it really resonated with me because in my time at an insurance company, I'd noticed that uh, there was more and more a push towards digital transformation within the industry. So really taking the paper-based insurance processes and moving them online um, so that co insurance companies would interact with customers over websites, mobile apps, and really collect data from from customers much better and more seamlessly. So I actually started to ask myself, okay, if we're doing digital transformation now, what's the next step? Uh, what happens later and where do I want to be in terms of position, positioning myself professionally? Um, so I didn't know the answer to this as I walked into business school, but I did know that I wanted to go to a place to an institution that really covered the technology aspect of business at, as best as they could. And all the universities I shortlisted, uh, Hong Kong University, they actually did that instead of just saying they did it because they offered courses in artificial intelligence, in FinTech, as well as the traditional finance courses, um, such as accounting strategy um, and investment management. These um, AI, FinTech, and technology courses, they were really focused on the business side of technology. So the business applications of machine learning, of, um, of FinTech platforms, of blockchain. So we didn't go really deep into, te into the technology because the people that designed the courses and the people that taught the courses, um, they weren't professors, but they were from industry, so industry practitioners. And what they understood um, pretty early on is that when companies hire people to implement technology, they, of course, they hire technologists to design the programs, to research the cutting edge areas of, of the tech aspect. But they also need to hire business people who understand the business very well. They understand the business pain points, challenges, opportunities, but they also need to have these same business people, they also need to have a foundational understanding of technology, whether it's how artificial intelligence works, what it's meant to achieve, uh, whether blockchain is a right fit for an organization or not. So these courses really were designed to train people who understood the industry, but wanted to augment their skill set with some technology expertise. They bring a lot of industry experts, practitioners into the classroom, both as full-time lecturers to, or adjunct professors or even guest speakers. Uh, I would say that uh, of all the elective courses we are offered, a good number of them are taught by people who are actually, actually applying those principles in business. And it's not just we had finance professionals come in and talk to us about how great finance is. Because although Hong Kong is known as a financial hub, uh, we have a lot of industries working that are really set up in Hong Kong, both from a product and services standpoint. Um, Hong Kong is a growing fintech hub, for example, because we we take um, because the talent from China, talent from really across the world, they come into Hong Kong and they see a great business environment to start a new company and you have a ready client base of both Chinese and international firms in Hong Kong. So it becomes really easy to pitch yourself as an up and coming company. 
And on the same, and on the flip side, you have a lot of established enterprises in things like real estate, obviously banking, insurance, or even like retail and services. So I would say Hong Kong is like a melting pot for industry. A uh, lot of businesses in a very small surface area, and there is really endless opportunity to, opportunity to learn, network, and really see what's out there. I'm happy to say that having gone through the program, the academic standards are very high, very rigorous. Um, part of my MBA was I did an exchange program at Columbia Business School in the U.S. Obviously, a top-rated MBA program, and I felt that uh, the academic side that we get on in HKU is almost just as rigorous. So our professors have. There, some of them are Chinese, some of them are from overseas. So you have this diverse pool of intellectuals, and they have like a really deep experience in their, in their, in their domain. But they're also really good teachers, and that really counts for somebody that's doing an MBA, because um, we touched on this before. Business school students—they're not really there for a deep dive into a specific academic area or vertical. But they need to get enough knowledge to apply it in the real world. So all of our courses, whether they were taught by um, traditional academics or adjunct professors, they really focused on the real world and tying enough academic rigor to really teach the students how to apply textbook knowledge and theory into real business situations. The MBA cliches are either you have some very focused, rigorous programs that churn out management consultants and investment bankers. That's the one side of the spectrum. The other side is like a very easygoing, disruptive kind of program, free-thinking program that that attracts entrepreneurs or people that, that from a design background that want to get into business. Um, HKU is kind of takes a middle ground. Uh, because obviously, if you're trying to study in Hong Kong, you're going to attract a lot of people that want to be in finance. But at the same time, um, Hong Kong University in particular, they attract people from a lot of different countries and cultures. So some of my classmates were from anywhere from Portugal to Peru. Um, so you had that diverse mindset, different cultures, and when you put all of them together, it actually becomes a fairly laid-back environment. Um, where there's a lot of idea exchange. So we didn't have half of our class going to consulting. We didn't have half of our class going to banking. Um, so the environment and the culture there was almost like, I would call it a mature undergrad kind of situation where you had people that knew what they were talking about, but it was still, we were there to have a good time to make the most of it. Because I think we realized that if you're doing in business school or doing a master's, this is probably the last time in your life where you can do absolutely anything you want and grow as an individual. So the kind of people that Hong Kong University attracts, they tend to be the ones that want to take advantage of that opportunity. I'm going to give you two or three brief reasons. Um, the first is class size. Uh, Hong Kong University's full-time MBA program. We have a, a very small class size of 60 people. But within those 60 people, you, you'll be hard pressed to find 10 people from the same industry, super diverse. And throughout my journey, throughout my journey throughout the program, I felt that I learned just as much from my peers as I did from my lecturers. And simply because you spend more time with your, your friends and classmates. Uh, the second is the quality of the exchange program on offer. Uh, at the other Hong Kong universities, they they do have good exchange programs, but as you're going into the program, you don't know where you're going to end up. Um, at Hong Kong University, I knew the moment I went in. I said, this is my target exchange school, in my case, Columbia University. And they said, yes, we'll give it to you. So we partner with um, Columbia London Business School and Fudan University in Shanghai, which are really top tier global institutions. Um, so it is very easy to get into, these, get into these exchange programs when you are at HKU, mainly because the class size is small. 
And the third reason, and we've touched on this before, is that a lot of every major university, they say we're going to focus on technology and sometimes it's just for show. But at Hong Kong University, we actually teach courses that prepare you for this rigorously and prepare you to apply it in the real world. So once you take all three of those ingredients, it really was a fairly easy choice for me because I did interview at these other schools as well. In terms of the cases and the academic material, um, we do focus on some Asian companies and Chinese companies, but we also focus on international companies that decided to do business in Asia. What was their experience? What were their challenges? Uh, people don't really talk about challenges of doing business in Asia in the media, but when you study it on a case-by-case -case basis and really deep dive, you learn a lot. So anything from business environment, regulation, or just culture and relationships. Uh, these are things that you can either learn the hard way when you're investing in a different country, or you can learn from other people's experience. And the way we were taught, it kind of gave us this, it prepared us for this kind of journey when we graduate work in, let's say an international company that wants to expand their footprint in Asia. Uh, that was super helpful. And even the professors, um, they had spent time either writing up these cases themselves, so they had to interview industry practitioners, or they're actually from industry. Um, one of my professors that taught us artificial intelligence, he's French, he's done business in Hong Kong for a long time. He launched a startup here in Hong Kong in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, he has worked for consulting companies abroad. So they really bring in a lot of real world experience and experience of what it means to do business in Asia. And that was super valuable. The word I think of when I somebody tells me MBA is adaptability. Uh, this has always been, this has been increasingly important over the past five to 10 years. And it's actually critical now. Uh, one of my professors that um, I look up to, a couple of my professors, they told us that the way they made it in industry is that they reinvented themselves every five years. They went from banking to fintech to consulting to technology. And going and doing an MBA, it really helps you do that and do it consciously. Uh, of course, you're not going to learn new skill. You're not going to learn like to become an expert coder if you were a consultant. You have to do that on your own. But what an MBA does for you is that it puts you in touch with people that have made this transition. Um, it really expands your network and it shows you what is possible. So instead of doing a simple Google search saying, what can I do in terms of my career? You can actually talk to people that have done it or are doing it. And this is not knowledge that you will find in any textbook or any kind of forum. And this is super critical going forward, especially because of COVID and the way industries are changing and how people are forced to adapt on the fly. Um, anybody that has been to business school to do an MBA, wherever it is, um, they almost instinctively know what it takes to adapt and succeed. Well, you have to answer that question from three different standpoints. First is obviously safety. Second, can you get a good job out of this? And third, how flexible is getting a visa here and continuing your career here in Asia? So in terms of safety, uh, we're starting to see life here really go back to normal. And if it wasn't for COVID's movement restrictions, um, we would be at business as usual in Hong Kong. And we're pretty close already. Uh, compared to other countries. So for a foreign student saying, I have to leave home, go to a different country, is it safe for me given the pandemic and any kind of social unrest? Right now, the indication is that Hong Kong is a pretty safe place to be. And in terms of getting a good job out of it, because let's face it, you're, you're ponying up a lot of money just to get a degree. Uh, the answer is, it is not difficult to find a great career break in Hong Kong simply because we have a lot of different industries, global companies, Chinese and international, 
doing business in a very small piece of real estate in Hong Kong. Uh, so in terms of networking, it becomes really simple. You literally have to travel 20 minutes to meet somebody or meet four or five people. And because, because Hong Kong is kind of like this, like the crossroads of business, whether it comes to dealing with Chinese clients, international clients, um, interfacing with hubs like Singapore, there's a lot of opportunity here. And the third question is for a foreign student, especially maybe coming from India is how easy is it to get a visa here to work and continue to stay? Um, super important. And I'm a Hong Kong permanent resident. I didn't have to think about this, but my classmates that made the transition from another country, they were really impressed that the kind of visa they got is called an IANG visa. And this visa is powerful because it's not tied to any specific employer. You own the visa as an individual. So if you feel like, oh, you're, you want to change jobs, you can do it. You're not going to be at risk of getting kicked out of the country. You just renew, renew the visa every few years. And it gives you a lot of flexibility and security as a working professional in a different country. So for all of these reasons, uh, Hong Kong right now, um, if we had no pandemic, it would be a pretty decent place to be. And I hope it gets back to normal. Uh, I think I'll go with a simple yet memorable answer. I mentioned before earlier on that um, if you're doing an MBA, this is probably the last time in your life where you can not only grow personally, um, learn professionally and do whatever you want. You don't have any boss that is pressuring you for a deadline. Um, you don't have, if you travel from a different country, you don't have parents or spouses or partners that are, t that are saying you have to do X, Y, and Z. You literally have full freedom. And some of my, some of my better memories are just, just like doing spontaneous things, like coming to class dressed up in a Halloween outfit because it was Halloween. And uh, at the same time, you, on the same day, really, you literally go out, um, meet great people, like you can network, um, learn a lot, even if your goal is not to like get a job out or something, just form really lasting relationships that, that last even beyond the program. I've been out of the program for a year and I've made friends that will actually last a lifetime. It's a bit of a cliched answer, but it is true. And people always talk about how great networking is from a, if you're in business school. Um, but actually, you have access to such a wide pool of expert knowledge that people will give you for free. Um, just the other day, I had a had like a business I question, um, and I just literally called up one of my uh, one of my um, people in my in my MBA alumni network, and they gave me a level of advice that I would have to, had to pay a consultant tens of thousands of dollars for. And when people say networking is great, they don't always tell you like how valuable it is. It's not a question of volume, it's a question of quality. And when you have a network like the HKU network, which is spread all over the world in any in many different industries, you really see the value of that.